this is Rose Cottage. It's a gorgeous little grade two listed cottage in the heart of Fallowfield. And when it's finished, you've got to think Laura Ashley, Kath Kidson, that kind of thing, when it's finished. Well, I first came with Hannah, um, who's the owner. It was full of dampness and condensation, no heating. The kitchen was just, ah, oh, just hideous. It all needed to be, to be gutted and started again. Well, it looks as though I'm standing next to a moat that we're trying to create around the cottage, and um, there's a certain element of truth in that, really. We were very surprised to find that the mains water feed for this cottage and the one next door um, rose up the living room wall, uh, through both bedrooms and the bathroom, and then into next door, which is not ideal to have mains water running through your house. Um, so what we've had to do is dig a huge trench all the way around the cottage to take the neighbour's mains water feed sort of off in that direction and to bring Hannah's in through the kitchen as opposed to going in through the living room behind a sofa. As a project manager or a builder you always expect the unexpected and in this room which is the bedroom above me we've got the chimney breast behind here is the chimney breast and clearly this section of the chimney breast has been removed at some stage in the past and what we found when we took all the old plaster away is that it was precarious, to say the least. I mean, the fact that probably Hannah could have been lying here in bed and had it all collapse on her, that would have been a real possibility. It was just lethal. Um, so what we've had to do is insert a big piece of steel from the front elevation to the rear elevation, right the way across, and support the chimney breast. We're in the bathroom now, and it effectively is like a little pod that's been created within the cottage on the first floor. And the reason for that is that um, structurally, the cottage... Isn't, isn't, wasn't that safe, it is now. Um, we've had to use, the structural engineers recommended we use very thick ply, um, and that is actually, in the wall here you see metal straps, and those are angled, right angles. And effectively what's happening is the pod of the bathroom is being clamped to the front elevation of the house. So it's sort of all been held together. Um, one side is reinforcing the other, and it just adds strength to a poor little cottage which wasn't very strong before. We've got a curious looking piece of timber up here and that really is because there's not a lot of storage in the cottage and storage is essential in any house. So what we're going to do, or what we've done before all the plasterboards put on, is to put this in and it's effectively a shelf. What you put is towels above here and toiletries and all bits and pieces and it doesn't affect the bathroom, won't affect the mirror which is going above the sink which is there um, and it means that Hannah's got somewhere for her knickknacks. We're in the second bedroom, which an estate agent would call compact and bijou. It's uh, pretty tiny. And the thing is with small spaces, you've got to decide very firmly what's going to go where and how the space is going to be used. Otherwise, you can get a bit lost with it. Um, so you decide where the bed's going to be and you put the plug sockets there and you decide where the wardrobe's going to be quite early on. And in this room, originally when we looked around, it didn't actually even have a, have a bed in. I think it was like a fold-down thing. So we've decided that we're creating a bed deck here. All this lot looks a bit cumbersome at the minute. But um, this is going to be a bed deck, so we're going to extend this with timber, and the mattress will go that way. It looks a bit odd, but, you know, we've, we've designed and redesigned this room so many times, and it's actually the best way that it works, and, and the only way, actually, that it does work. So the wardrobe will go up over there, desk here, and then these areas will have some sort of nice timber shelving and it can be used for light and books and storage. Um, so in a very, very small space, it's probably only just over a metre and a half wide, which is nothing. Um, you've managed to get, or we've managed to get all the essentials in, which is pretty good going. <laughs> um, on the first floor, we took down all the original ceilings and exposed the shape of the roof and we've boarded them and insulated them. So it's kind of given the cottage a little bit of character back because it kind of lost a lot of that over the last 25 years. So it feels um, a bit church-like and a lot more spacious. The upstairs feels much more spacious. Uh, and we've managed to keep some of the purlins exposed as well, so those will be sanded and those will look beautiful when they're done. This area we've had to keep because we're going to put in something called a PIV unit. All of these cottages have a real problem with damp, notwithstanding the water leak, just, just generally. Um, so what, it, what the PIV, Positive Input Ventilation System, does is it just brings dry air back into the cottage all the time. It takes air from the outside and it needs somewhere to sit. So its little house is, is in there. So that'll be plasterboarded over so you won't see it. Um, and we've maintained some storage over the top of the bathroom. We've left that um, space open. So Hannah will have a little ladder 
outside the bathroom at the wall and she has to scuttle up there and put a Christmas tree away and, uh, and that's some nice extra storage in there as well. So lessons learned. For clients, I think, get a structural engineer's report or at least a home buyer's survey and not just a valuation because valuations aren't really, in my opinion, worth the paper they're written on if you're not a builder or a developer. Um, if you're buying a list of building, expect to spend the first four months not doing anything. At the minute, the guys are plastering that you've seen, and now's kind of the exciting time, because now's the time that you start thinking about skirting boards and door styles and flooring. Uh, we've decided on what flooring is going to be in the kitchen and throughout the rest of the house. We've picked the bathroom, so the bathroom's arrived. It's actually in my kitchen at the minute, of all places. Um, taps are here, all the sort of fiddly, gorgeous little bits. And this next probably two or three weeks is the time when all that arrives on site and is fitted. And then suddenly there's a massive transformation. I mean, it looks like it's months away, but actually this is the stage when everything starts being pulled together and the pieces of the jigsaw get fitted in. This is the time that clients start getting really worried because they're thinking, I've got to be in in four weeks and it isn't anywhere near done, but actually it's not that far away. <laughs>